Hi guys, today I want to show you how I feel about academic reading on the Supernote A5X, the Remarkable 2 and the Onyx Books Note Air 2 Plus. Okay, so this book is quite large. This book is more than 24 centimeters wide and more than 29 centimeters high. And you can buy this book as a PDF, just with the watermarks. So let's have a look inside. You see that the layout of this book is uh, somewhat of a challenge. You have two columns and you have margins and these margins are used not heavily but from time to time you have some notes here which are sometimes really helpful or necessary and you see working with such a monstrous book is awkward right Digital devices may help us, we'll see in a few seconds. Okay, so I put this aside in the bookshelf and uh, fetch the devices. Okay, let's start with the Remarkable. We have here both volumes of this uh, calculus book. And I open the first volume. We have the whole page in front of us and um, we can collapse the sidebar and now we have a good overview. But the question is, can you read this and can you really conveniently work with this text and these graphs? And uh, we see here, these are not artifacts from scanning. These are in the real book, but you can't tell what this means here. Okay, we can pinch zoom and with two fingers we can pan through the page and adjust the zoom level accordingly. And now we see that we have an arrow here and we have a factor of two by which this 4 is multiplied to yield 8. So that's the scheme which is explained here and they, by, uh, by handwriting, they added this information here. Yeah, this was tedious work in those days. Okay, you see that the panning works quite well, so I wouldn't complain about this. And what I sometimes like to do is a pinch zoom with two fingers of left and my right hand. So this can be more convenient than this movement here. Okay, anyhow, um, we can even zoom and simultaneously pan the page to the correct position. You see? So when I want to read this first sentence and have it zoomed in to the max, I can do this with one continuous movement of my fingers on the screen. Okay, and now we have the optimal view onto this paragraph. And we have our margin notes here, which we can get into the viewport without problems. Okay, we have a full screen view. And there are often things we have to examine more closely. So let's zoom in. Wait for the refresh. Maybe wonder about the page. And now you want to flip. 
And so you do it with one finger as you are used to on the Remarkable. And that's quite nice, I think. So you can go to the page you want to examine, you zoom in, read your stuff, pan through the page, do one finger movement to the left and you're on the next page in full view. So that's nice, that's great. Remarkable is the best for now, but there are two other candidates. Next candidate will be the books Note Air 2 Plus. So let's open it. Okay, we are on some random page here and uh, we can also pinch zoom here and we get a helping window as long as we are in the pinch process and when we stop this process this help window disappears. We see the page separators. Let's say we would like to have a closer look at this part here. So we can zoom and move. Yeah, but the movement doesn't work so well. So best thing is get it to the zoom level you want to have and then pan with one finger. And this is quite smooth and very fast. So it's no problem at all to find the parts of the page you want to read. Big advantage is in this case you don't have to think about how to flip the page. Just tap on this icon here and you're on the next page and it keeps the zoom level. So other than the remarkable, the books device keeps the zoom level. This might be an advantage or a disadvantage that's a subjective thing. I would not uh, say the one is better than the other. So you just have to know how it is. You can also use this menu icon here. This opens up the whole top menu of the new reader. And now we have a plethora of options here to, to adjust our view and work with the PDF. So instead of using the pinch zoom, which is activated here, and now it's on again, Uh, you can also choose to have a page display where you can't pan out of the page. So in this mode here, we can pan through the whole document. So we reach the next page without a page flip. We just push the current page to the top and in the bottom the next page comes up. I like this um, method most, although when you are, let's say you are down here, that's our page end, and we have a closer look at this paragraph, and then we have to read the next column from the top. So. You just have to be a bit careful that you don't overshoot. But we see we are still on page 57 here and that's the first paragraph of our second column and we can go on with reading from this point. So I think the books does a good job. You can work with this somewhat clunky PDF quite nice and I think that uh, you should have no problem to work with such a textbook on the books device. Okay, so let's get to the next candidate, which was our super note. 
So we are just in the document right away. And I have experimented with this zoom window here. You see this thing? When you pinch zoom, this window appears. You can't stop it from showing this window. And as long as you are in a zoom level, this window is somewhere, somehow in your way. So it's um, not ideal, suboptimal, I would say. So it would be nice if you could somehow click on this window to make it go away, but uh, there is no such thing. The next thing is if you want to move this window, you have to find a part of it outside of this movable frame here. So you have to tap in this area here. We have now the 100%, the full view. We can do page turns here with this top bar. I have adjusted this bar to be on the top. We can start zooming in by pinching. It took, it took its second now to react. A disadvantage of the super node is that you can only change the zoom level in 50% steps. So 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. So it's really, <laughs> really goes into the details, right? Let's try to get back to full view. Pinching does work, but not very quickly. So you have some reaction time, as you can see. Now, no reaction at all. But when I tap here, it's quicker, you see. So the quickest way is to use these buttons from the zoom window. I often disable any touch function because when I write, I often have my palm on the screen and this leads to triggering functions I don't want. But let's say we have the normal one finger page turn gesture. We can do this. So put away this sidebar. Now we zoom in, let's say on this graph. Okay, now the window is in the way. Put it down here. And now we can go to 200%. Yeah, uh, and we can pan with two fingers, but it takes its time. It's better. This does only work here with my finger and not with the pen. And when I use my finger to position this graph, uh, it's uh, the most convenient way to position this frame here over the graph and then everything's fine. In this upper left corner we have another graph and you can just move the frame there and there you have it. So that's quite nice. Now let's flip the page. Yeah, It works. So one finger page turn works fine also in zoom level. And as the book does, it keeps the zoom level. So we are still on 200% and can read our text using this frame here. And I think it's, it's quite a portion of text you can work with. So reading this and, and then you can just move to the next paragraph that's uh, quite convenient way to find your way through the book.
So overall, you have now seen how these three uh, devices work. They have their differences, their pros and cons, as always. Once you get used to it, you can work with all of the three devices. So academic reading, complicated PDF books is possible and it works and uh, what you like best you have to decide by yourself as always so have a nice day and see you next time bye bye